Good evening, good evening, good evening. This is Pastor Jay with Anointed Radio. And like always, we're going to go ahead and start off in decency and order. And we're going to come out of Psalms 9 and 9. And it says, The Lord is a refuge for the oppressed, a stronghold in times of trouble. When you're going through something, when you're having issues, when you're feeling like the enemy is winning all around you, he is that stronghold, that refuge to go to when you don't know what else to do. So you have to remember that God is the answer in your time of need. Dear Father, thank you, Lord, for bringing us here into the studio today. Let this show be a, 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 a test of time to be able to help somebody, to be able to share the word, to be able to get out to people that have never been reached before, God. God, we just thank you for this platform. Let it be driven by you today, Lord, and we just thank you for all the things you've done to bring us halfway through this week. God, right now, we just ask you to touch every listener, everybody that's going to listen to the playback on the podcast so that they could be able to know you, to be able to find out about you, and to get curious about you so they can say, what can I do to be saved? God, we, we love you, we thank you, and we, we ask you to just be able to watch over us, build us up, take out anything that is not of you, and build us with all of you, of likeness like you, attitudes like you, mindset like you, to be able to see your wisdom and hear your guidance. We thank you, we glorify you, we give you all the praise. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Amen, amen. This is Pastor Jay, and like always, I got something to say. You can find me at Anointed Jaylon on Instagram and Twitter, Anointed Jaylon, J A Y L O N. Or you can find me at Pastor Jaylon on Facebook. Make sure you go follow my co hosts who are in absence today. That would be Mr. Chris Johnston. We're at Sing Chris J. You can see everything at Sing Chris J. Or you can see Dr. Marvinetta Clay. Um, at Clay Marvinetta or Marvinetta Clay or Clay M. There's a whole bunch of stuff. Or you go to drmarvinettaclay.com or you go to singchrisj.com. And guess what? You could go to pastorjloncalhoun.com. Go download each one of our singles. You could get my single, Jesus, You Make Me Happy. You could get Chasing After You with uh, Chris Johnson. And you could get Worship Forever with Dr. Marvinetta Clay. Go add that to your playlist, your gospel playlist. Teach it to your choirs. Go ahead and spread that word. That's the whole annoying to radio team we're gonna have a playlist soon where the anointed radio team everybody that's on anointed radio show it'll be our songs right. so we building that up so we got in the studio today we have mr j in the building what's up bro? and this your first interview yeah what yeah man. yeah yeah okay it we is Glad you were able to have your first interview here Appreciate on Anointed it. Radio, broadcast it. everywhere. Pop on and and if you ever missed a show, you could see us on iHeartRadio, Pandora, Apple, Android, Google, TuneIn, Radio.com. Everything but title because Jay Z is hating on me. I don't know why Jay Z be wow. hating on me. He need to add me. I'm on everything but him. Come on now, Jay Z. So if you know Jay Z, go ahead and tell him, hey, go add Anointed Radio Network on title. That's the only one we missing. So we definitely gonna go and I was I don't I didn't know how I was gonna go with the playlist, but I think I'm going to go this route with James Frantoon with Zaccardi, I believe. See y'all in a minute. This keeps me going On those days when I feel like giving up Fire I believe The storm will soon be over I believe The rain will go away Make it through it. Oh, I believe it's already done. 
I want you to already see yourself out of the storm. The clouds will move. It's time for you to smile again. Mm. Come on, Sean. I believe my family will get better. I believe God will provide. pre-approved you for it. Come on, Zaccardi. I believe that my God is a healer. Yes, he is. And I believe that I will survive. Oh, I, I believe that I tells us that if any two of us shall agree on anything on earth, that God will do it for us in heaven. And I know sometimes life has a way of knocking you down to the point where you can't even pray for yourself. But today, I want to agree with you that it's getting ready to get better. And right now, we are giving your problems an expiration date. And we're saying it's over. That you've been crying long enough. That you've been worried long enough. That you've been struggling long enough. And I believe that God's gonna do it for you. I believe, boy, God's gonna do it. Yes, He will. I believe, it's gonna get better for you. I believe, God's gonna do it. He's gonna.
crying out to me in the darkness from where I can't see it says I hear I feel your pain and sorrow I love you so much I send my son to die on the cross for your sin so I could shower you with mercy
then approach the throne of grace with confidence so that we may receive mercy and find grace in our time of need. I was so broken and Jesus saved me and that is why I am all about the Lord. I'm chasing after you, I'm chasing after you.
The economy is down. People can't get enough. Talking about folks out in the street, but right in the church, drug habits is some folks hiding, just can't beat. There are mothers and robbers, no place seems to be safe. Lord, but you. Protection. Hey. You've been my protection every step of the way. Yes, you have, Lord. Yes, you have, Lord. Yes, you have, Lord. And I want to say, and I want to say, and I want to say, thank you.
In his name, y'all. Amen. He was like six years old this whole game. That that's that's cool though. That's fine. But this is back and we're going into our interview phase with the guy who just was trying to age shame me. Everybody out there, he's age shaming. It's okay though. That song was hot back then. Yeah, that, that song was awesome because I sung that song before. Yeah. You let it? No. Oh. No, I did not. But back to the interview. We're here with Jay, one of the founders of Go. I'll let you explain. But before, we're going to do an icebreaker question. Cool. What is your favorite basketball team? Boston Celtics. So that was the Anointed Radio Show. So we. <laughs> Boston, Boston Celtics, man. Uh, grew up loving the Bulls because of Mike, but overall, Celtics fan, man. Celtics fan. And actually, a Vegas native got drafted to the Celtics, mm. uh, Marcus Banks. Look at that. The same year LeBron got drafted. Mm. Celtics. Yeah. That's what's up. What about college? Which uh, basketball? Mm -hmm. North Carolina. Okay, I could. Tar I, could, yeah, yeah. I, I, I could see that. Tar all right. All day. Yep. All right, all right, all right. Like you said football, you may not like my answer. I already right. know what it is, so we're not going to talk about that. So we're going to go ahead and talk about. <laughs> no. Wait, so what's, what's the football team? College. No, we don't need to talk about that. We don't need to talk about. Let's hear it. College, Alabama. College, that's a decent one. Yeah. Okay. It's, it's in pro, pro Alabama. Alabama. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
playing for a church just for a check. Mm. And they're treated like employees. Mm. So let's say, for instance, um, I'll use myself. I have um, a great relationship with my pastor. Shout mm-hmm. out Pastor Kelsey West. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's it's nothing for him to call to say, hey, man, just checking on you, making sure you're good. Do you need anything? X, Y, and Z. Now, there's tons of ministers or musicians that can't get that same thing. Right. They just better be at church on time and dressed accordingly and know your material. Well, I have to speak from being a minister Mm -hmm. and look at, I feel like that culture, well, me not growing in church, but coming into uh, church as a teenager and seeing the back scenes and all that Mm -hmm. stuff. I've seen (laughs) musicians pull out guns on ministers before and it gets serious because people get disrespectful. One thing that I want to say though, is this looking from now I'm, this is that was me from the outside this is me being a minister one thing that i do see is that if your main if your main goal is you know well you know if if i gotta go do two full services i'm gonna need to get paid that's understandable but then now you've took it from a spiritual aspect to now employee aspect because now you're saying well i have this well if you are going to require a, a salary for this mm-hmm. then now let's make it as a job and have stipulations i need you here at bible study i need you here to be at sunday school i need you to be here i don't need you to just take a check and then leave Understood. because you're going to go collect another check somewhere else yeah, that's absolutely. understandable but if you see it's kind of rough because i've been on both sides right see i was worship leader right and i've sung for big people and I had issue about the pay thing because I'm sacrificing and things like that. Mm-hmm. But that wasn't my focus because I'm saying, you know, if you don't take care of me, God will. Mm-hmm. Right. So yeah. if I, I know, you know, because I'll be looking like, okay, everybody else get a check. Oh, am I? You know, and y'all going to help take care of my gas? Uh, you know, right. I had to sit and, and bring choirs together and do all these things. So I understand that part. But I think, like I said, Jesus being the, the focus the again. Center. Absolutely. Because that's where the riff comes. Because it starts getting anger and pride about stuff that ain't got nothing to do about God. It's more about the logistics of things. So, so can we agree that the culture has changed? Yes. And oh, it, and it's, my it's, Lord. It's yes. All, it's all business. Yes. Right. Because one thing I could say is now you don't see that. When I was a kid, mm-hmm. you know, when I was six, when I heard that song, like you were saying, <laughs> our musician was a member. It wasn't a person that came and played and then he had his church. That was who was in our church, was at Bible study, right. taught Sunday school, right. taught the little kids and everything. He was an actual member. Mm-hmm. Now, you know, one thing I did see um, in my neighborhood, I don't know, I'm not from Vegas, so I can't testify to that. But in California, what happened was um, people start seeing a difference because a culture was made. Um, there was a church. Um, that moved to our neighborhood called New Birth. Mm -hmm. And they took a lot of our members because they was like, I'll give you 4,000 a month and all you got to do is play. Right. So now people are like, I'm at this church. I do. They start calculating, you know, because you start seeing like, all right, hold on, man. I I play, you know, then the pride coming. I play way better than him or or I sing way better than her and she getting this at this church. And then you start making demands of a church that don't have the salary cap or like that. And then then you start seeing a mindset change because I even had that. Well, that's that's where a conversation needs to be had. Right. And where okay. the church and the ministry needs to be as honest as possible. Because there's nothing worse than you doing the full service and they didn't bumped all night and shouted and spoken tongues. That part. And you have to wait for your check. That part. Only for it to be $25. Right. Giving me flashbacks. Right. So, <laughs> so, <laughs> so. And, and that's the reason why I got out of the music ministry, to be honest with and, you, because it's, it's rough. In, in essence, I understand why the musicians are frustrated. On the other end, I understand why the pastors and ministers are frustrated. Because every like, this sums both sides. Right. Everybody ain't the same, and we start putting a stigma. Right. Like you said, hirelings. Correct. Well, a lot of people just think, oh, this rich, this rich pastor, mm-hmm. this rich minister, he got this, he got that, and then you start thinking like, well, if he got this, 
Because I thought that way. When I was a, a worship leader, I'm like, hold on, wait a minute. Everybody make money but me. Right. And then you start putting about it. And like you said, having that conversation and being honest mm -hmm. to your staff mm -hmm. and say it. Because, you know, one problem, I heard this on a, a sermon a while back. Sometimes we get beyond the altar. Mm. Musicians and ministers, we have mm. that that's, that common thing where we don't come from behind the pulpit and 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 lay at the altar, right. and and the musicians don't stop playing and say, "Let me go ahead and get to the altar," because we have this, you know, we get so full of stuff that we forget the focus, and right. that goes back to what I was saying, right. having that focus be of Jesus. Right. Well, I mean, which goes back to this basketball game. That part. Uh, the first game we had, I want to say we were up like 20, musicians up 20. And uh, the musicians, the ministers came together. Uh, Pastor Kerry Connor, Minister Jamil Banks, uh, Jamie Pollock. Like they, they really got on the same page, Jelani Fuqua, and they cut that 20 point lead down to like maybe four. We still end up winning. But just to <laughs> I love how you added yeah, that part. Of yeah, we, we right. still end up winning. That's such a 49er way. To <laughs> <laughs> What's your score again? <laughs> but but just just to see the the ministers come together, like yo, like these guys, they're good, but we can come together as a unit. And the musicians fell apart. No lie, as they're chopping down the lead, musicians on the sideline arguing back and forth, right? So it, it gave me more ammunition to be like, yo, what's good with this brotherhood? Mm. Like if we're if we're all ministers and we, I mean, musicians are ministers. Yes, ministers okay? of music. But if we're all uh, musicians and we share the same bond musically, where's the brotherhood at? Mm -hmm. And so there, there's a couple more times, you know, we had these games and we lost because we could not come together and and just make gumbo, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So, so well, it you seems know. like there's a level of expectation that wasn't set, and and also um, playing with hurt. Mm -hmm. Like it's it's not being spoken. It's an unspoken hurt that people are operating in. And mm -hmm. I mean, I I've never seen musicians get paid either. Like my brothers and my dad, they did all the music stuff and I was a singer so it's like you know singers we don't get paid well not all of us um <laughs> singers don't get paid a few do a few do a few do but do. most of the majority but don't majo exactly right. and I grew up in the south so it's like and that's multiple and that's multiple services right. exactly that part. like yeah we're singing at everybody's event and we're traveling all over at the expense of your own guests. following the pastor yeah mm -hmm. at our expense right. so there's a level of expectation that hasn't been met i'm telling you i've been on both sides so <laughs> yes. I, so this conversation is very enlightening to me because, <laughs> but one thing i can say though i'm really i was at a point of hurt yeah mm -hmm. and i turned it to be i'd rather be a higher link i don't want to be part of ministry I'm going to come, I'm going to sing, and then I, and God got me. It was a time I was doing that. We just won the How Sweet the Sound concert. People start getting a little buzz behind my name. So I'm like, oh, I could go right. and make choirs, and I'm young. Right. So I could go make youth choirs, and, and churches didn't have youth. So I was bringing youth because I've already set up choirs at the high school, choirs at church. Mm -hmm. So I'm setting up that, and I was like, I'm getting a check for this. Right. So, but then I start realizing, because God was like, so why you go to church? And I was like, I'm doing ministry. I'm making excuses. I'm doing ministry. And God was like, see, you running. Even though you're there, you're running. Yeah. And I had a car accident during this time. Yeah. This is the time of disconnect. I'm like, I'm at my pastor because he was doing stuff. I'm, I'm just going to different churches and right. doing the musician thing where I'm setting up bands and I'm setting up choirs and, and, and worship teams and I'm setting all this stuff up, right? And I'm getting paid for it and I was treating it like a job and God was like, see, you disconnected from me. And when I flipped my car, all I heard was, but I'm not done with you yet. Wow. Yeah. And I came out that car accident, my car flipped. It was a Monday after church mm -hmm. and I'm, I'm kind of struggling with it. I'm going to work and I flipped three times in my Ford Explorer. 
horrible card. Don't ever get it. And <laughs> I, um, I flipped. I flipped three times on the freeway, and it was raining there. That missed a car by an inch, hit a merging sign, tore that merger sign out, it obliterated. Wow. And I came out, and what the uh, the way I got out the car is my Bible, which I always drove with, bust the front window. That's and that was the way weird. I got yeah. out. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was like, when I went through that experience, it changed me on the inside, because mm -hmm. God was saying to me, all right, now look at this. Yeah, I gave you this gift. But I don't need you to look at what man is doing. I need you to look at what I'm doing because I'm going to take care of you. Right, right. So if they pay you, if they don't pay you, I need you to go and do true ministry, not this treating me like I'm a job because right. you're going you're gonna to come to church and then you're going to turn me off as soon as you walk out those doors. And that's what I was doing. Mm. And I was out of a hurt place. Yeah. And that, that, that can come with, do you really have a relationship with God? Mm. And that's a deep question that, that that's a huge question. yeah do you actually have relationship because if in this i have this conversation with, with my wife shout out to my my wifey but we have this conversation can is it is it possible to be hired and play at a church but have a separate cover because mm. that's what a lot of musicians are doing right now like my favorite drummer of all time calvin rogers you know, he, he started in Chicago. So he, he toured with John P. Key, all them guys. So now he's playing with Fred and uh, Isley Brothers. Mm -hmm. So he, he does these church church events, church concerts, makes his money. But he has home where he don't charge anything. He's just like, yo, this is my home. This is my home, my covering. This is where I get fed at. And, you know. That's how he, I believe every musician should have a cover. So they don't. I'm going to put it to that. Singers are that way too, because there's a lot of people on the top charts. I'm not going to say no names. That yeah, they sing gospel, but they don't have a church home. They don't have a covering, and that goes with being renegade. Is that, so you is got that even safe. No, no, it's, it's not. not. No, it's not. And that's the thing that we have to look at as Christians. And instead of holding grudges, have conversations. The conversations that you don't want to have that might make you cringe, but it needs to be said right. because all we're doing is assuming. And it's not going to build anything. Assuming, doing Facebook right. posts. Oh, God. Facebook rants. Rants. Oh, rants yeah. and but it goes back to that level of expectation. Right. Because once that level of expectation is set mm -hmm. and then peace, people also understand the difference between religion and relationship right a lot of us are operating in religion and so because we're operating in religion we've gotten hurt some place or, or some point in time in the church and so we're operating from a place a place of hurt mm -hmm. even when we interact with the people in the church and we sometimes forget that no matter from the top being a pastor down to the person who has never operated in any kind of ministry in the church we're all still human beings at the end right, and right. we still need to have a relationship with God because at the end of the day we are responsible for ourselves Correct. and so when it comes to the musicians and the ministers or anything like that we still have to remember that this person or that person might have interpreted something wrong or maybe they came in frustrated mm -hmm. already mm -hmm. and they're missing out so then it just takes one little hiccup that's turned into a mountain yeah, like, and it's a I'm separation out. between out. the musicians and the mu right. ministers or pastors and you know how, whomever it might well, be between it's, and, and there was a, a post I just watched today talking about division you know we are so quick to kick people out and, and shame people of adultery, of homosexuality, of all this, but we let people that cause division, hello somebody, we don't, they, it's not like we stop that. We, we're, we have to start realizing, see, division is where the chaos starts. Because it's easier to get rid of something as opposed to dealing with it and exactly. healing it from the root. And, and see, and that's a big thing. And, you know, one thing that we have to start looking at is what Jesus really wanted us to do and what Jesus wanted us to really be. We we are Christians because we're followers. That's the, what the belief is. But in the Bible, it says to be what? A disciple. Mm -hmm. we, we, we say Christian, Christian, Christian. But in the Bible, it tells you to be a disciple, and it tells you exactly what a disciple does. Deny yourself mm -hmm. and carry your cross daily. 
where that means you Yo, yo, rash thinking. Lean not to your own understanding. That part right. it was in New Testament where it says, mm -hmm. "Deny yourself and pick up your cross daily," because you have to realize it ain't about you. Right. And that's where, from minister to singer to musician, we got to start realizing it. It that divide right. and that 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 clash between minister between musician, because it's not. It doesn't just be minister ministers versus musicians it'd be associates uh -huh. and pastors cool. it'd exactly. be singers and musicians right. and and it's it's just a form of clash and division that causes chaos where we cannot unite and see that there's people out there that's hurting there's people out there that need help and we so caught up like right now in our nation fighting each other instead mm -hmm. of finding the 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 solution to the problem right. exactly and right. that's why you know what you what you and Chris have come up with mm -hmm. like y'all not not only in the spiritual realm but literally physically y'all have it where it's not something where it's inside those church walls it's mm -hmm. outside of the church walls right. because you know it does start at home and sometimes it starts in a safe place and you know basketball is genius wow. a lot of people like to play it so you know you yeah know. um it, it it is if we can get the competitive nature out which i don't think we can to actually like here here's the the, the first uh, thing that I wanted to do before we had these games was to have a round table. We've had one round table. That's awesome. We've had one round I like table. That. We have one round table just to get everything out. Mm -hmm. Like whatever musicians that have an issue with this pastor Stop talking about them behind their back. Stop, stop doing your Facebook rants. If you, if you a man, you a real bruh, and you got an issue with this man, set up a meeting, talk to that man, let him know how you feel. Right. If you guys cannot come together, what are we actually doing? And 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 how can we tell? And I'm going because I'm a youth pastor, so I always bring this in. Right. How can you tell your son? How can you tell your nephew? How can you tell the younger generation? The kindergarten methods of get along with each other. If the adults, if the adults don't do it, man. don't do it. Yeah. Because it's it's not. You see, we've always had the horrible stigma, especially in the black community, where it's do what I say, and don't do I what I do. I do. And we've already seen. I've seen. Man, I could prove that I, I didn't listen to that because I did exactly right. <laughs> what they did instead of actually listening to the wisdom that they was having. Because I'm like, you've never showed me that. Uh, you didn't show me that way. You right. showed me this way. This is how I deal with stress. This is how I cut people off. Because we are, when you have a disconnect, the devil is busy. Because he could fuel so much lies. He could fuel so much gossip. And that's where we have to watch out for. And that causes discord. That part. And then, you know, an uh, old mother, you know, God rest her soul, she's no longer here. She always told me, before you do anything in ministry, you pray. You pray before you play. You pray before you preach. You pray before you listen, sing man, listen, because you got to take all that. you about to start a whole church service worship service <laughs> here right now. That's supposed right. to be an interview. Hey Amen. Let's saying. go talk about that. <laughs> I'm just saying because it's it's the, the fact of the matter is is that the church is in a real delicate space right now. Amen. And either it can go real bad or it can get real good. The only way it can get real good, and my grand oh my grandmother gooder, is if I like those words. There's an actual real relationship and prayer, mm -hmm. and prayer, mm -hmm. and prayer. Prayers, yeah. it, prayer is the answer. Prayer, because you know you're not. Sometimes when we can start praying for other people. You can't be mad at somebody you pray for. That part. I've learned that. You could be sitting there, you like, you know what, God? Actually, I had a situation where this person was real ugly to me. I was at work, and this person was real ugly. And I got, said, God, whatever they're dealing with, touch them. Mm -hmm. And she came to me and said, I apologize how I was. I said, that ain't nothing but God. Yeah. Because you got to get to a point of realize who you are and whose you are. Right. Because people are so quick to talk and throw venom on people. But you forgot that if you are a child of God, and if I'm a child of God, we all remember when we was kids, daddy whooped everybody. Everybody. Yep. So instead of doing that, yeah. make a man shake the hands, 
be respectful because that's one thing that we have issue with. You know, it's not what you say, it's how you say it. Right. Where you could be able to mend those things. And I think that's powerful that you're doing that round table because that's something that will make a step during to the right, In the right direction. direction. Right. right. Yeah. I, I prayed that it happens again. I prayed that some some the big faces of Las Vegas will come to these round tables. Shout out Dave Blakely. Shout out to uh, Joe Piggy, who I consider are the faces of Las Vegas because mm-hmm. they do so many big, huge, di- like, they are the face of Las Vegas. Yeah. So if you had a gospel concert and the artist said, well, will Dave be there? Will Joe be there? You somebody, mm-hmm. right? So if I can get Joe in the building, I can get the rest of these guys in the building. If right. I can get Dave in the building or guys who, who's been in the vine yard for years and made careers and made money, they can testify to the music game and get them in the building. This this newer generation, they'll they'll fall in line. True. We, we lost the OGs, man. Well, and that's I was gonna say that we lost we lost the OGs, we lost the grandparents, mm-hmm. we lost the mentorship. Yeah. Because if you think about it, if the older generation comes down and tells us, you know, young man, I, I, I remember those days, <laughs> young man, let me holler at you right, right quick. Right. What, what, what's up, mother? What's up? You know, how you doing, Deacon Jones? Right. You're doing wrong. Yeah. You open your eyes, you be like, hold on, what you mean? What I'm doing wrong? Like, yeah. that's when you start, mm-hmm. you're doing wrong. Yeah. And, and that's what we miss because nobody's perfect. But right. you gotta be, like you said, man enough or woman enough to be able to say, I set my flaws, I might have an attitude, I might have mm-hmm. said this the wrong way, I might have did this, and be able to say, Can you forgive me? I'm sorry. Right. Because a true man and a true woman will be able to say, Can you forgive me? I'm sorry. Right. Because they could own up, hello somebody, right. and have accountability for what they did instead of always having the blame game. Because you're not gonna do nothing, it's gonna just go full circle back to now. What did you do about it? Right. Right. So about the basketball, let's get it. So basketball, because t- we always come up with a lesson. I like that. That was, that was dope. <laughs> I like this conversation. So um, about the basketball tournament, what day is it? It's uh, How many games? This Saturday. Uh, What's the date? September 28th at okay. Doolittle Community Center. Okay. Uh, first game will be twelve. This is our first year having a ladies game. Uh oh. Yeah. Is that to represent the WNBA now yeah. in Vegas? Well, yeah. If you really want to be honest, like the reason why we do breast cancer is clearly for you know for women, for women yeah. that, right? That has fought the fight. That has you know. Yeah. You know it's a crazy fact that men get it too. They do. I never they do. knew that. They do. Yes, they never they knew do. that. They do. But until um, I went to a health fair and I said. Men could get it. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Go 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 get go get checked out. Go um, go to the doctor. Go to the doctor. Man. People yeah. in general. Go to the doctor. I know that's the biggest like fear that most people in the community have is going to the doctor. But you know, I know this is off the topic, but I really want to put that out there. The the, the reason why most people leave ma- maturely is because prematurely. they don't prematurely. Prematurely. Yeah. Prematurely. Mm-hmm is because they don't take care of themselves. Right. They don't go to the doctor, they don't get the checkups, they don't make sure, you know, if you're diabetic, you're still eating the sugar. If you if you have all kind of illnesses, you mm-hmm. gotta start taking care of yourself. Right. That's why I really start love reading about Dr. Sibby and how he was talking about how the plants do certain things. Mm-hmm. Black seed oil, y'all. Right. Irish Irish uh, seed moss, it take you a long way. I just gave y'all two of them. Y'all got research the rest. Right, 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 right. So the first game is, uh, Ladies game, and then we have the main event with the ministers and musicians, uh, with myself as the captain for the musicians. Uh oh. And do you minister- become automatic like MVP? No, no, I would, I wouldn't. <laughs> the only way I'll take because that'll be a real forty nine away of you. <laughs> <laughs> the only way, the only way I'll take the MVP is if I score forty. If you score, you score 40, forty, that's the only way I'll take it. Okay. What's your average? Since we're talking about stats, ten. Well, my guy, Chris. We got Chris in the building. Yeah. Hey, we got Chris in the building. Yeah. What's up, bro? What's up, y'all? We was just yeah. playing Chris's song. Oh, you heard it? Oh, you be listening. Forgive me for not knowing. I was like... Oh. Yeah, wrong one. Yeah, we on air. We, we interviewing. We got Chris Johnson in the building, y'all. Right. Whoop, whoop. 
Uh oh. Hey, hey, hey. Uh-huh. <laughs> so, you. yeah, that was me. So, um, what do you want as um, as the takeaway for this event this coming up Saturday? Hmm. To actually get different ministers, different musicians around the city to be a part next year. Amen. Not not the same faces. I, I love my brothers dearly. Um, and we do have the same musicians and the same ministers that we have the past couple of years. And there are far too many churches, far too many musicians to keep using the same people over and over. Right. So I do want to reach out to a few different multicultural churches. Mm. Okay. Just, yeah, just getting the word out. Um, that's it, man. And ho- hopefully somebody get saved. I mean, the, the game is that do little. Right. So, you know. And with that many people concentrated, it should be <laughs> it should be a great turnout. The second prayer is that everybody keep their witness. Amen. No matter how competitive it gets. <laughs> no, for real. Amen. 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 No, for real. Oh, I already know. Oh. I know too. Yeah, Amen. you know what's crazy though, because um, in a lot of sports, it help your competitiveness make you have to be a team. You know, because I don't know, maybe in bat, I don't football. Like in football, how I trained a lot of the kids in high school is I make sure like you could not like him, but today you are gonna protect him. You gonna protect them. Yeah. You gonna be on the same yeah. team. Y'all gonna ride for each other, and they can hate each other on 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 outside the field, but on the field, yeah. They buddy buddy. That we we even had to the point where we when they walked on the field, they was holding hands like you, y'all brothers. Right. Y'all going on to right. this fight and this war together, and that brought a lot of people that beefed into friends, like into brotherhood. And one thing I was gonna say with the round table that you added, y'all should be honest with you. What what a great brotherhood and sisterhood do, which I'm thinking about like in the South. They go out and eat. Right. Because you don't eat with people you don't like. I'm going to let you know that. That's, that's, that's not something you do. So if, if it's like a situation where, you know, because that's a delicate situation. Two delicate situations in humanity is sleep and food. Right. Mm-hmm. Sleeping around people and eating around people. Right. So if you if you could get like a like breaking bread with brothers and sisters, yeah. it's, it's going to open up and for people to see them outside the light of what they think. Because they're like, oh, you like, you like Tabasco? I like Tabasco. <laughs> Pass that Tabasco, y'all. Hey, y'all got crystals? Let me get some crystals. You know, that that's the thing that will get the bond. Don't you yeah. ever. Crystals is terrible. It what? is. The red hot is terrible. Did you just get that crystal Tabasco Louisiana hot sauce? I'm sorry. Wait, so what? that was annoying to radio. <laughs> I told you this about three times. I almost cut him off and it said the show was over because he just said crystals I'm, was bad. I'm glad crystals he, is definitely must be a Bay Area and Southern. Right, because we, that's what we eat. Is that crystal. crystal hot sauce. I forgot you from from the Bay. Yeah, yeah I'm not from here. Yeah, but Chris sure. actually was, was at Vallejo when we would go out there mm-hmm. at King Solomon. Yep. I know King Solomon. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I know that church. Yeah. We was talking about in the Bay Area how he used to go play basketball and then people come out like, Hey bro, where you from? And then he'd be like, Not from here. Oh well you got to go. <laughs> <laughs> but there there is one thing that you said that I I, I pray daily. U- unity is my thing. Okay. Mm-hmm. If we can all come together, I believe God is happy. I can I can count about maybe twenty musicians that has issues with each other. And if y'all are in the building, my prayer is that they squash that beef right there and there. Amen. Amen. You know, beef is a spirit. Because it's not just, you know, just beefing with people, having like squabbles and discord. That's a spirit because you got to look at it. It goes from one person. Yeah. And then it turned out to be a whole, you're like, I didn't even have an issue with you. Until. Cause you know, you know when they turn into an issue. I'm gonna let y'all know something. You know when they turn an issue, when somebody comes to you, like, "Hey, Chris, you heard about Sister Jenkins?" And and Chris come back and be like, "I, I ain't trying to talk about that." Oh, so you protecting Sister Jenkins? <laughs> so you a op too, huh? Right. And that's how it happens. Because if you stand by the word of God, and be like, I'm not gonna argue about nobody. I'm not gonna talk about nobody. And my number one thing that people hate, that I say, if you got an issue with them, then go talk to them. Exactly. That's how I say it, but you know, everybody's different, and I'm from the Bay Area, so. No, and I, I get the Bay Area thing, but it's kind of like, 
I mean, I've been to church my whole life, but I've also been about that life. Right. And I've always believed in get down on who you're mad at. And they talk a lot. I see it, man. Squash the issue. Cause, that part. Because nobody's going to fight. Nobody's going to bust a grape in a fruit fight. <laughs> let, yeah, I was like, let, let's, let, let's hope we don't get down before. No, 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 no. Because no, no, no. I, I believe that because it's like, it's, it's one thing growing up with my grandfather. See, he would get on me, and I'm not saying this because it's just a phrase that he would say. He would say, men handle their issues. Because how can you lead a woman if you can't even handle your issues in a brotherhood? Mm-hmm. And it's like, you you can't you can't you can't because there's too many people that act more feminine in situations when it's like you my mama used to nag man listen let's not nag let's come together as brothers and say that's the issue our god let's handle it we could disagree to agree to disagree and let's Ooh. still move forward yeah. and chances are whatever the issue is it's it's probably some petty Petty musician, small petty. Oh yeah, he can't play to a click track. Oh yeah, he playing the wrong key. Or eh, so what? So what? You know one thing. And if we he, gotta start teaching instead of comparing. If he did, why didn't he pull him to the side and say, "Hey man, you and know, I think you could you could work on this a little bit different." That's mentorship. Exactly. Same. That's thing, mentorship. Same thing with ministers. Yeah. Because there are some ministers who have left churches upset. Because the the preacher or evangelist misquoted the scripture and it was wrong, so he went left, talked bad about the man the whole night. All on waiting. Facebook instead of coming to him and say, "Hey, it that was in the church," and and then goes, "Yeah, unity, that. man. Let's, we, let's 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 instead of breaking let's come apart, together, man. Like let's come Anointed Radio's mission statement, like I say all the time, unity brings change. It does. You know, one thing that I can say, you know, we was just talking about this uh, the the Sunday service that. Kanye had mm-hmm. all them people that from different backgrounds, different talents, came together, worship God, and 198 people wow. was came to Christ. And people had issues with that. People yeah. don't have issues because with everything, but fine. here's the, but look at this though. 198 people came to Christ in one day. That's huge. So if we can all come together and have a unity between churches and not have beef and go to the breast cancer awareness game between ministers versus musicians, musicians. Yes. and the hybrids that's, that's been both. Y'all should have a, like the ones that have been both. <laughs> they actually, we do. Yeah, yes, you do. That, I know do. a few of them. J- Jamil, Jamil Banks, shout out my guy, Jimmy. Yeah. He's, a, he's a musician first. Now he's into ministry. Mm-hmm. He's playing with the uh, ministers team. Ronnie okay. Thomas. Yeah. He's yeah. playing with the um, ministers team. And I think there's a couple ministers that's not really ministers, but you didn't I, hear that from me. Amen. I'm just kidding. Amen. I'm just kidding. But no, but no, Chris, man. No, and Chris. Shout out to my guy, Chris. I mean, this is. Um, we plan for this all year long, and we just try to figure out different ways to make it bigger and bigger and be able to donate more and more to Susan G. Amen. Um, I think last year was like 500, so this year like a 1,000. And, you know, uh, no no better place to do it at than Doolittle, where it all started at. Amen. Yeah. Stay true to your roots. Yeah. Well, where can everybody find Joe information and Chris's information? Because y'all are the two founders, you know, you know, throw that out there. The two founders out there, Chris and Jay, you know, Jay and Chris, you know. Right. Where, where can they find your guys' information? You can find us on Instagram, Out of Bounds Outreach. Um, you can find us on Facebook, Out of Bounds Outreach. Or you can di- um, contact me directly through Facebook, Jay Spade. And uh, you can reach Chris at Christopher Lowry, Lowry or EP. C low on Instagram. Okay. So, yeah. Um, our email is the same, uh, out of balance outreach at gmail.com. Uh, for direct contact, uh, I won't give my phone number out. On no. Here. There's some people that will, though. They're real bold. So, Shakita. Yes. Guess what? What? So, cause, so that you don't be like, you don't ever shout me out. So, you're playing this Saturday, one of our very own, our yeah. office manager, <laughs> Shakita Andrews. Yes. And you're going to be playing. How do you feel and what do you expect? 
Um, I expect to just have fun, really. Um, basketball, I grew up playing basketball, running track, so sports is my thing. And so to play with a group of women, that's also great because, you know, the sisterhood is a bit, you know, we're struggling a little bit too. Scarce. And um, it's just time to unify. Like, mm-hmm. it, it, uh, things happen. That's me. <laughs> that was you. Yeah, that was you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, yeah. Um, you know, things happen, and, you know, sisters, we go through the same thing, especially when you're a believer. Sometimes you're put on a pedestal and expected to act like Jesus, but people forget that you're not Jesus. That part. So, you know, to be able to just come together and learn and meet new people, that's pretty exciting. And so then I get to see how out of shape I'm in, you know? Amen. So <laughs> decide how much cardio I need, I need to start doing before the year is out. Because there will be cameras out. People will be going live. So, yes. I'm just, oh. Yeah. Hey, I'm man. I'm usually one of them. Actually, uh, the second game we had, I proposed to my wife that year. Go ahead. Yeah. Was that it? Yeah. Nice. Nice. out of town. Yeah, at Center Court. Oh, yeah, I missed that. That's really? dope. Yep. yep. Uh, That's special. Is Nicole still on? Yep. She's on. That's amazing. Okay. That's I know she cried. Did she, did she cry? She did, did she cry? Yes. She did cry. Yes. Yeah, they're all on beautiful. Facebook Live while we get later. Yeah. yeah, did they cry? Yeah, girl, you see me? Yes. Anyway, so we're going to go back and I'm going to call my best friend of Anointed Radio. Cletus! Play, son. Yes. Let him use you. He's anointed. He is anointed. That's why he stays at Anointed Radio. So, definitely go out and support uh, breast cancer awareness ministers versus musicians and next year and the women the women's game, women's as, well. game as well and next you know it's gonna be singers versus musicians that's gonna be dope too we, we tried that with kickball we, we do different y'all, y'all games need man. to just go ahead and do a football one so pastor jake go out there and dust if, myself out if, if you're serious we can get flag football going i'm that, still waiting on I'm the baby down. mama versus baby daddy football. game huh i'm down. The baby mama versus baby daddy game. man listen hush uh, that's chris. what i'm waiting for i'm turning chris mike off now yes but mute him immediately <laughs> so <laughs> the, the, i didn't mention that the men's game starts at two o'clock i did i did say that right no I did not say But that. now everyone knows at 2 o'clock, two be o'clock. at Doolittle this Saturday, the 28th, and check out the game. And guess what, y'all? Wait, is there surprises? Or, no, just okay. wait me one Sorry, I'm, my bad. Are there prizes for the person that brings the most out? What about that? Mention that too. So, that so people can come I'll make it fast. The This year, in order to have the MVP, you have to be the best player and you have to bring the most people out. That's fair. So it's cool. It's cool that you can score thirty, but you only brought two people, so you disqualified. Yep. Ouch. So everybody bring some people. Well, I'm bringing my whole tribe. I win. Oh. You gonna put some? You gonna put about, some buckets in? Uh, uh, oh uh, yeah. About that. So we're gonna go ahead. You can find me at you better Anointed Jaylon. I'll be at a rehearsal most likely. Amen. But I'm supporting from the rehearsal. I will be on Facebook Live all day laughing at people falling. Right. Amen. So, because he was talking about how old, how young I was. Did you know that, Chris? He was coming at me saying, I, I know. Hold on. I know. We closing. But I had to say this. Chris, he was like, he was like six years old when that song came out. <laughs> he tried to sun me on my own show. But it's cool, though. I'll be watching. Is that, Y'all put Ben Gay is that and Stretch. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Earlier, earlier. <laughs> so, you can find me at Anointed Jaylon on Instagram, Twitter, uh, Facebook. You could check me out at um, Pastor Jaylon. Go to PastorJaylonCalhoun.com. Download Jesus, You Make Me Happy, my single. And download the whole Anointed Radio Team's single. And yeah what I want to leave with you today is this it's pleasant and good for brothers and sisters to dwell in unity it sounds very biblical right yeah it's Psalms 133 so just want to leave y'all with that unity brings change say that one more time I'm Chris Johnson uh, you can find me at St. Chris J stchrisj.com um, you can check out my single Chasing After You go download that and I have nothing to say I just got here Praise the Lord. Amen. (laughs) I got here safe.
Oh, I'm Shakita. Um, you can find me at Shakita underscore Andrews on Instagram and purchase my book, The Unbroken Train to Be Broken. Dope. Makes you think. Yes, it do. Yes. Yeah. And my name is Jay Spate. You can find me on Instagram at that guy Jay Spate 23 or Out of Bounds Outreach or Jay Spade on Facebook or you can find me at your nearest praise and worship Amen, Amen. I'm, just, I'm just kidding yeah <laughs> yeah yeah Amen. earlier I'm just kidding earlier he yeah, yeah. <laughs> we see y'all in a minute Thank you.